I'm refinishing a few pieces of wrought iron furniture and I, I'm really looking forward to this project because I think the chairs are going to look great up on the deck of the barn and that's if my wife lets me keep them there. I'm sure they're going to end up over by the house. But anyway, um, I like old wrought iron furniture because it's just got a heavy feel compared to some of the stuff that's available today and it's really not that much work to paint it and make it look new. So uh, let me just tell you the steps that were involved in this project so far. I went over the chairs first with a wire brush to remove any loose paint, any loose rust, and then I primed the chairs with a rusty metal primer, and then I painted the chairs with a high gloss oil-based enamel paint. And I used a brush, uh, a lot of people would probably rather spray, but I had the paint and I really wanted that thick feel that you get from brush painting. So now that the chairs are painted, I'm moving on to the seats, and I need four seats that measure 15 and a half inches wide. I'm making the seats out of Sapili, and the first step here was to glue three boards together to give me the width, and I've spaced everything out, and now I'm going to cross cut the boards to 15 and a half inch squares, and then I'll cut the circles out on the bandsaw. Now that I've got the boards cut to size, let's take a quick look at the circle cutting jig. You can see I've got a board clamped to the bandsaw table and measuring from the bandsaw blade out seven and three quarters of an inch is the head of a screw. This is screwed up from the bottom of the board and the screw is protruding through the board just about an eighth of an inch. Now we're looking at the bottom of one of the seats. I'm using a straight edge to go from corner to corner and marking a line. This is how I'm finding the center of the seat. Now I'm drilling a small hole in the center, only about an eighth of an inch deep. Back over at the bandsaw, I'm going to drop the board on the jig with the hole falling on top of that screw. Now I can spin the board around and the blade will cut the circle. After I cut the seats out on the bandsaw, I shaped the seats to have the look of an upholstered seat. And I think the shaped seat has a, a much more elegant look than the seat that's just cut out on the bandsaw. So I've already shaped three of the seats. Let's go ahead and shape the last one. I'm going to start by using the router to put a slight round over on the bottom of the seat. Next I'll measure down about 3 eighths of an inch and mark an indication line on the edge of the seat. And when I grind the seat, or shape the seat, I'll stop at this line. 
I'm measuring in two and a quarter inches and this is another indication mark. I don't want to go past this mark when I'm shaping the seat. To shape the seat I'm using an angle grinder with a 50 grit sanding disc. All right, so after I finished shaping and sanding the seats, I used a spar varnish for the clear finish. And that's an oil-based finish. It's often used in boat work, exterior doors, and also outdoor furniture. It is an oil-based finish, so it takes a little while to dry. And I allowed 24 hours in between each coat and sanded in between each coat. And right now, I've only got two coats on the seats and one coat on the tabletop, but I tend to put three coats on everything. And I think, uh, I think they look great. I really like the way the wood goes with the white uh, steel. So if this is the first time that you've tuned into my channel, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And also check out my weekly eBay auctions. Each week I post a new painting, uh, something that I've painted here in the studio and framed in the wood shop. And uh, I'll have a link in the description for that. And also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.